So the episode opens with boring and boring. Basically, Megan fit cuss Xander out. Polly Pocket trying to get another mile on her, you know what, because she can't stop having sex, because I guess that's what validates her. And Brady the Horn Dog, he was willing to do it, but then I guess he thought about it and said, yeah, I'm already in a tough spot. I'm already going through too much. I don't need to add this complication on top of the other complication. So I'm going to push you off me, tell you to chill, put you on ice, and you need to stop being a, a um, you need to stop being a, a garden tool and stop around here trying to have sex with any man that I look at you and tell you you're beautiful. Because I best look what you're doing, um, Polly Pocket. I don't get you. You have, Your body haven't even much healed yet, and you are already talking about sex again. Sex valid validate you or something, Polly Pocket, because I'm not understanding you. It's like any man I tell you you're beautiful, I spend a little time with you, you get attracted to and you wanna have sex. And then you see it in your eyes that Brady already got his revenge. What about me? I want mine. So now I'm guessing you won't end this love. Take Titan down. What you gonna bring to the table? Medical supplies? Cause I'm not understanding what you plan on doing with this whole corporate takedown. Unless you plan on breaking medical advice and medical supplies or whatever you're going to do, then maybe. Other than that, I don't see what you're going to do. I just don't. Good try, but you're not needed in this plan. But then again, Brady probably going to let you in anyways. I don't know why, but he going to. Now, Claire, Sierra, not excited that you're out. The only people that's inside that you all is your mother, your dad, your dad, Marlena, who career for to get ruined, John, and that's it. Oh yeah, and hope. Why are you forcing yourself on Sierra? Sierra heard you was out. She not happy about it, but she dealing with it. Why must you think you got to go see that woman? That woman don't want to see you, Claire. You didn't try to kill this woman on multiple occasions. I wouldn't want to see you. I need my space. I need my time. When I run into you, I just run into you. Now is not the time. You're not going to force me to have an interaction with you if I don't want one. You want in my out a hot 10, 20 minutes, and you then ran your little happy behind over there to Sierra, telling her I got to see you. I just had to come see you. No, you didn't. That's on her time, not your time. She can pick and choose when she want to see you. Not you. You got to see her urgent. Your urgent don't mean nothing to her. Her urgent means a lot to her. She values her life. The one you tried to burn up several times. Claire, you already messing up. You want him to try a good hot 20 minutes and you already messing up. Forcing yourself to have this interaction with Sierra and she ain't ready for it and she don't want it at all. But yet you trying. Cut it out, Claire. Again, Will, ain't nobody looking for Gabby besides you. Like, you might care, we don't. Gabby that took us through enough stress and aggravation for us to say, eh, she'll be fine for a few days. You know, we not missing her, but we like to see her anyways, you know, to work on our nerves. Will, we enjoying our break, break away from Gabby. Hate to bust your little bubble. I know that's the mother of your child, but Ari will be fine with all of She barely spent time with Ari anyway, so Ariana won't miss her too bad. But will you care, but we don't care. I'm just saying, we don't. Like, for real, we really don't care. You care a whole lot that we do. Uh-oh. You know Jake already, you know ain't feeling Gabby. Now with Julie in this story, mm. Yeah, Gabby, that's not another W in your column. That's another L in your column. You didn't get the serum to work on Jake. Well, you didn't get to use the serum on Jake. That's an L. Now this L, you about to tell. Well, then you got kidnapped. So that's another L. And now that Jake know this story, mm, 
And you know Julie got more than one story right, Gabby. She got this one. She got the Nick story. She got this, the Nick story. And she got another Elon line of story. Jake, how much time do you got? Cause she got a whole lot of stories for you. I hope you I hope you warm and comfortable and got on your um the right gear to sit through all these stories she got to tell you about Gabby. Cause she the one that's gonna give you the bad math about Gabby and make you look at Gabby a totally different way. Even though the Nick story was you know, her twist and turns on it. But we ain't gonna let her have that one about the Nick story. Nick was a nut, and he got exactly what he deserved, and I ain't changing it. Oh, we wanna make amends. I just got to stay here to Salem just to make these... Mm, Again, Claire, it's not on your time, baby doll. It's on her time. You cannot tell a victim or more than one time that you tried to burn a line when or how or whenever you want to see them. It's daytime, not your time. And she closed the door on your face right now, push you out, you get what you deserve. Because you forcing the interaction on that woman again. And you know you're not going to get no success. I'm just letting you know, you talk about something, you can say it if you want to. You don't want Sierra to tell the honest truth about you. You you can't handle it. You wouldn't be able to handle it. You might end up trying to burn her down again. Claire, you're not prepared or ready what's going to come out of Sierra's mouth. And if she says something out the way at this point, you was in, you in, you in this woman's face. She not ready for you. She don't want to see you. She probably helping you out. But still, you in her personal space now. A victim have time they need to get over a certain thing. Sierra might need a whole century to get over what you did to her more than one time. That's her choice. Marlena should have told you this, but it seems like you hard-headed and you just had to see her. But you know what? You're going to be crazy again and going to act crazy this time again. And hopefully this time you won't get as far as you got the last other times. Oh, so it's on this water under the bridge, Sierra. Mm -hmm. You better than I ever be because somebody tried to burn me alive on more than one at a time. Yeah, it wouldn't be no water under no bridge for me. It might be something be thrown in your face that ain't water. Or I might have to put my hands on you. That'll be water under the bridge when I get done with you. But it wouldn't be no water under the bridge for me. And here got a little cute little cute. Oh, if you forgive me then, let me be your maid of honor. Huh? Claire, you're trying it. You're pushing it a little too hard, my dear. Maid of honor. Sierra, and if you say yes at this point, you letting her in your life, everything she did, you best be saying it's okay. Ain't no way, no how, no hell I would let that happen if that was me. But then again, this is you, and I know you love your niece, but I went in love with this hard to forgive her and talk about no water under no bridge. I'll have to swing on her first, then we'll play water under the bridge afterwards. Until then, I am. I'm sorry, but like then again, Sierra, you're a better woman than I ever be because it wouldn't be me, and I wouldn't be forgiving her. Not this early, I won't. Polly, Polly, don't you got enough time? Don't don't you got enough um stuff on your time schedule you should be doing besides sitting up here, you know, trying to make Brady do things even worse than he already doing them. And then you're going to bring up the fact that Xander did this to him in two years almost in past. Stop, Polly. Stop. Because I'm still wondering why you, what you're doing out of jail and why haven't you been arrested yet for kidnapping. You talking about what Xander did to Brady. We, we, we still need to talk about how you still allowed and walking around scot-free while Elon Lina trying to rescue Gabby. We need to be um, figuring out why the hell they haven't picked you up yet. And how you got all this little free time. You got to be got all this little free time to be removing and around like you be doing. You're doing a whole lot of moving and I don't like it. Pilot Pocket, cut it out. 
you the last question on this earth to should we talk about revenge or getting back at anybody. Them. Haven't you done got enough for Rex already? And you talking about some he hurt you. Yeah, he hurt you the first time, but you hurt him twice over. Let's not forget about that. And I ain't got to go down the list because you know exactly what you did to that man. But you want to play as you the victim. Go sit your victim behind down somewhere part of the pocket. Ain't nobody interested. On a lighter note, Will just accepted, um, what's the boy name? Ben, um, to be his best man. They both were there for each other. They both started off as a Rocky, well, they both started off Rocky with, you know, Ben, you know, murdering him and, now they friends. After a stint in prison, they became friends. And Will said, sure, why not? I'll be your best man. So Will and Ben have come a long ways. They turned from, you know, he didn't like him. Then he killed him. Then he came back to life. Then somehow they became friends in prison. And now look like they got a, a, um, a booming friendship. Like, Guess you make friends in strange places, as they say. For them, it was, but I guess that's shooting you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, Julie, you didn't calm down a lot of your age. You have calmed down and you have done less. I was really hoping. Well, I wasn't hoping because that would have been rude and disrespectful, like you always are. Well, sometimes I say sometimes. I was hoping you was gonna pull out the out pull out the um the Nick story. I'm surprised you left that one alone. And if you want to make Gabby look bad in the worst way, you could have brought up her being a felon. You could have brought up her being a criminal in that Nick story. That probably would have been a nail in her coffin. The coffin. The fact that you didn't blame bring them up, you either changed, matured. Or you don't want nothing to happen to Gabby, even after she got done playing with your heart. It's something up with that. And I want to know what it is. Because any other day, you'll go in on Gabby. Ain't no ends, no buts about it. Everything Gabby done, you would have said it and wouldn't care who wouldn't care who got mad about it. The fact that you ain't say nothing about nothing but just your heart... I'm a little concerned and worried that, you know, you might be changing. Because at the end of the day, you would have been, you know, brought up all Gabby's dirty little, little um, skeletons out the closet. You stuck with one story, meaning what happened to you, and you let it go. Hmm. Maybe Julie didn't mature and got softer, I'm guessing. Because that old Julie, oh, she would have told it all. And would have told and gave you some hot cocoa to in the blanket just in case she would have got cold. Just to tell you about Gabby. And I'm surprised she didn't go in on her like she normally do. So she then told you no. You can't take no for an take take no for an answer. Now you want to help her with this. Now you want to help her with that. Now you want to do this for her. Now you want to throw her a shower. Claire, give it up already. That's about the best thing you can do for yourself at this moment is give it up and leave it alone because it's not gonna end well for you at all. Hold on, a uh, Polly. So, if you want to hurt Zelda where it hurts, where he hurt you and you got to sleep with me, you'll just take sense with anybody wants you, Polly. It's just no helping you. You just got to have it. You can hurt Zelda more ways than one than having sex with you. For real, for real. Brady already hit him where it hurts because he which well, y'all pretending like y'all together. So it's already hitting him in the gut now. Sleeping with you is not going to make anything no better. But keep on talking, keep on talking, keep on talking. Like I said, Brady is a horn dog. 
sooner or later, you're going to hit that jackpot, the Brady jackpot, because Brady ain't going to deny no sets one too many times, Sam. You on the right track of getting him in your bed or you getting in his bed. So keep on going with that, even though that is, you know, kind of nasty. Cause y'all related somehow, somewhere. The karaoke's in that timeline fit together. Some it's nasty. But if if what if y'all insist, go right on ahead and do it. I guess y'all are nasties. And here come the being reference. And here come we family. Can't you give me another chance? You still think I'm crazy? If Ben can change, I can change, girl. Claire, Ben proved that he can change. Can you? Can you prove? Because you haven't proved anything. You still got your same impulses, and you still exploiting one now, and you want to use the Ben reference and family reference. That... Claire, didn't I tell you it was too soon for you for all this mess you're doing? Like, you doing the most. You doing the mess. Please cut it out and watch Sierra end up giving in to her. I hope she don't, but she gonna end up doing it. And she then talked Sierra into it, and Sierra said, "Fine." This is what she. This is why she thinks she can get away with murder, and then literally come back into the victim face and beg them for forgiveness. Then ask to be a part of their special day, even though they know they shouldn't be asking these court. Sierra, if you like it, I love it. That's about all. If you like it, I love it. That's about it, and that's about all I can say for that. Because I, she wouldn't be inviting nothing of mine. Nothing. And Maggie, even after all the stuff he didn't did to your daughter, why are you giving this? Oh, God. Why are you giving Xander advice on how to get, get your daughter back? Like, I don't get that. Why are you giving Sour Puss any advice? The only advice you should be giving Xander is getting the you-know-what out of my face and leave my daughter alone before I go help her get a restraining order against you. That's the only thing you need to be helping her, him with when it comes to your daughter or pertains your daughter. But I see you ain't got enough common sense and you like Xander. And even after he didn't did that, all that stuff to your daughter, you still, okay. Maggie, you a fool. Cause my daughter come before my daughter come first before this little thing right here. But I said you got your priorities all mixed up again. So the episode ends with basically the police being alerted. Eli and Lonnie on the case for Gabby kidnapping. So they got a, you know, they normally give you a little 28 to 48 hour before you can um um pronounce somebody, you know, being missing. So they got a little cut on that, and Elon Lonnie on the case, they didn't question Jay, tell him, telling him that we involved, we know Gabby missing, what do you know about it? Now being known, and Ciara and um, Claire was talking. So now, since Claire didn't saw that paper of the, you know, the girl, Jake girlfriend, she said, wait, I know her. Mm -hmm. That was the same girl you was talking to telling your business in Bayview. Now you know the girl that caused all this problem. It all coming in the full circle. So now that now Claire for to help them, I guess, get this girl. Jake for to get what he want, meaning that um whatever he stole, from, well, whatever she stole from the mob, and that's going to stop him from getting in trouble, thanks to Claire, if she willing to play ball. But I'm pretty sure she's going to use this to try to be um Sierra made of honor, honor. So I'm pretty sure she's going to use that to her advantages and as always. But anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all day. Bye.